Okay, the next group of mutations I want to talk about are what we refer to as kind of frame shift mutations. And these mutations typically occur when you have the insertion or deletion of base pairs. So we're looking at inserting or deleting bases from an original DNA sequence. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to do a strand of RNA and translate that for you, and then insert uh, and I mean uh, insert a nucleotide and see what happens then after the point of mutation. All right, so here's a quick an amino uh, quick RNA code. I'm gonna just for simplicity's sake pick triplet codons. All right. And now I'm going to translate them. So here is our sequence now of amino acids. So now what we can start to do is insert base pairs in here and see ultimately then what happens to our code. So in this particular case, I'm going to insert a base here, here. So I'm going to signify that as number one, and now I'm going to rewrite that with an inserted base. Now I'd get our groups of threes. So once again, right here is our mutation. So I look at our triplets. The first amino acid is going to be the same, and now I'm going to look at the other amino acids that are now produced. Okay, now as you can see, our first amino acid is the same, but when we put in a base pair here, we shifted everything over. So everything after this point, as you can see, is changed. It's different. We've changed our our amino acid sequence. So we actually refer to this as a frame shift because we've changed our open reading frame. So this was the insertion of one. So now we can do the same thing, but let's insert two base pairs. And I'm going to insert two base pairs right at this point. So our point number two. Okay, we've inserted our two base pairs and they actually occurred at this point. All right. And now do our groups of threes. Let's go back and do our amino acids. Okay, so once again at this particular point I inserted two base pairs. And so if we look at our now amino acid sequence and compare that to our original, we had the first two amino acids are the same, but then the point at which we inserted the two, we're going to change our reading frame now. So we're not going to get the same amino acid sequence. And actually what happened is we induced a stop codon. So by shifting that frame over two nucleotide positions, so it changed our triplet codon sequences, we inserted a stop codon so we will do a premature stop for this amino acid sequence. So the protein will be changed. All right, so last but not least, let's insert a group of three. So at this point, I'm going to insert a three, and we'll see what happens. Okay, here's our sequence, and right here is my insertion. So our number three will match up here. So we've done one insert, two inserts, and now three inserts. Let's look at our triplet codons. And now let's translate. Now, as you can hopefully see, was we indeed made a change. We inserted three base pairs here. But all it did is because we still maintain our open reading frame, our triplet codon, so we actually ended up inserting an amino acid. Now this may or may not be a big deal. In this particular case, the amino acid I did insert is proline, and this typically will do some pretty drastic change to the three-dimensional shape of a protein because of the shape of the R group on that amino acid. But ultimately, let's look at it once again. 
Frame shift is going to be the insertion or deletion. So in all these cases I inserted, but as you can hopefully see, the same type of event would occur upon the removal of a base pair. And basically, when we add, everything gets shipped over. So our reading frame changes, and after the point of deletion or insertion, the amino acids change. But ultimately, if we actually insert it in groups of three, we're not going to change the sequence of the protein except for the addition or deletion of an amino acid. And once again, this may or may not lead to a big problem. So these were just different types of mutations on the micro level that I thought would be helpful to talk about.